There's a certain couple that like jumped on the bandwagon when it came to like betraying you. They wanted to leave you broke, busted, and disgusted. That's what I heard. Okay, but the purity of yourself and the authenticity that people see like has them in anxiety. Has them in anxiety. Okay, they're heartbroken and they're left broke, busted, and disgusted. Okay, they could be out in the cold because I heard it's cold outside. And I mean, it's fucking cold outside. So, um, where I am. Getting that they wanted to hide your shine. And now they're trying to save face. They don't know what to do. And like, if your worry is still about me. If your worry is still about me. This was a third party in this situation that was. I'm getting paid to cause heartache. If your worry is still about me, trust me, your worry shouldn't be about me, okay? Because you involved people in this situation that wasn't necessary and they're pissed off at you, okay? I'm hearing off with their heads, okay? Your worry should be like the person that wants to decapitate you. I'm hearing names, but I'm not going to say who they are because they're talking about like a couple in my situation. Okay. A couple people from Big River. Okay. Somebody wants to be dead. Like, I don't know why, what your, why your worries are still about me and you being broke and you being what, homeless? It's not where your it's not where your head's at. It's not where it should be at. Like I'm getting like off with their heads. Decapitation. Yeah, somebody's ordered to do this. Instructed to do this. <clears throat> off with your head. Somebody sees like the strength that this person has had after all the things that you ordered to happen in their life. Yay, yeah, it's okay. I'm just going to move on, but I just had to say that. Something about something significant about decapitation. For attacking someone who's pure, authentic. Pure and authentic. Authenticity. You tried to have them suffer, suffer losses in life, major losses in life, okay, and attack them from every angle. So, like, this is what people, this is what a certain someone wants for you. If you're someone who wants to, like, off with their heads, okay, with these certain people, that invested in organizing something here, organized crime, okay? Don't do it, okay? A part of these people's karma is to live broke, busted, and disgusted because that's what they hold high. That's what they hold near and dear, okay? So God wants to have everything that they've invested in and causing people a lack, loss, God wants to bring lackluster in their life. God wants to bring poverty, poverty in their life <clears throat> for karma. God wants them to live out this shitty ass fucking life till they die miserable. That's what it is. That's the order it's in now. That's, that's their due karma. That's their due karma. So just move on from this. Move on from this. I don't care if they try to entrap you. I don't care if they try to kill you, okay? Cut them off, okay? Tell everybody you know to cut them off, okay? Let everybody know. Let everybody know. Don't fucking talk to these people. Don't fucking talk to these people. You don't even have to go to in, in depth of why because these people already have so many haters, okay? Because they're their own worst enemy. And they've attacked more than just me. And they've entrapped more than just me. Okay. Let it go. And it's going to be like hard if you have this much like 
animosity towards someone that you <laughs> want to cut their heads off, but like, um, let it go. Let it go. Because, because you enduring all this, like these setups and, and hate crimes and I'm getting rats, but like you having to like deal with these people, these people causing conflict in your life, burdens in your life, major betrayals in your life. Okay. Your karma is to cut, cut this entire group off. Okay. Cut them off. Because they need to be able to live out their karma and they can't do that if you're still in their energy. They can't do it if a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend knows a friend who knows them. Okay, because that's still linking back to you. You have to cut all these people off and love self. Okay, and you'll go into union swiftly. Okay, as soon as you make that decision and take action, this will swiftly move into your life. And then these people's chaos has nowhere to go but back. And they have to watch endings in their life. They have to watch endings in their life. And you be with people who are just like you. Just as loyal. Just as loyal. Okay. Just as direct. Okay. Just as passionate. Okay. Because I'm like getting lots of passion. Okay. I'm getting ride or die. That's the exact. If you're a ride or die type. That's the exact type you'll get. Okay, but you need to cut these people off and you need to be able to let that go. Let it go. Okay, because their karma fucking sucks. Okay, their karma sucks. It's just way too easy for them to just go die. It just is. Ooh, damn. Yeah, they manifested a death. They tried to have death in your life. They tried to have death in your life. There's a significant death spell that was done on me last night, okay, from a childhood friend, a childhood friend, that's not my friend, okay, you fucked up when you thought that that was my friend, okay, that's not my friend, I already know. I already know what it is, okay? So you could have a childhood friend trying to do death magic in your sleep. In your REM state. In your REM state. Exposed. I'm hearing Brooklyn. I'm also hearing Celeste. I'm also hearing Desiree. Okay? I'm also hearing Craig. And I'm also hearing Steve. And these are all people from Big River. So it's like... Ooh, and then I'm getting certain, like, sex parties... Sex parties in order to what? Do magic. Yeah, get you in your dream state. You exposed yourself in my dream state. You exposed yourself in my dream state and now I'm being able to be very direct with like, you're not my friend, okay? You never were. Otherwise you wouldn't wanna have this happen in my life, okay? And now everybody knows about your guys' sex parties to conjure up shit. Like that's why you guys hang out in a group, right? Little clicks. <laughs> oh, I'm hearing more names, but I'm like, they never did anything directly to my face, so. <laughs> shit. Okay, moving on. Yeah, this is going to backfire. A backfiring of energy. Let it go. Let it rest. Okay? Go heal. And by healing, all you have to do is stay to yourself for a few weeks. A few weeks. Things will come to you and you'll be able to let go of that and realize that, like, you entertaining these people was, like, going to be the best years of their life. Okay? And now you cutting these people off are going to be the best years of your life. Okay, and then they just have to live with that. They just have to let it go. They just have to let it go because they know that they're very lucky that they're not fucking having their head cut off. I don't know why it's decapitation, but it's like I'm seeing people's heads cut off. 
and seeing people's heads come off. Like that, <clears throat> that is a potential outcome, right? If you keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and conjuring up things you don't even know you're fucking with, to have these people even have more intent, ill intent, the in, ill intent that these people saw on you, okay, they now have that for you. And it's backed with your evil magic. So it's like, do, 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 do. It's like fucking maximum capacity psychopath <laughs> after you now. <laughs> Shit. See, that's why it doesn't pay to be evil. It doesn't pay to be evil. It doesn't. And even if that money's fast, like it, it doesn't pay to be evil, especially to people who are pure, okay, who are just trying to help other people who are in need at this time, okay? Now you're trying to walk away from this. Hopefully this isn't like already happened. Okay. If so, write me. I'll be your pen pal. <laughs> Shit. I'll be your fucking pen pal, man. <laughs> uh, Shit. God, God forgives everybody, right? Even murderers. Even murderers. So... It's just as, 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 as I'm hearing so long as they choose to live in his will afterwards, right? They recognize they're learning from that because something got them there. Something got them there. Okay. Everyone is connected to source when they're born. Everyone. Okay. There's a certain trauma. Okay. Something that triggers those empathy, that sense of part that part of their soul to flee their body and this is why the empathy is gone after a while wherever it goes back to and it's different extremities it's different extremes for everyone okay so everyone's different in how they feel and process things so the littlest thing could make that part of that person leave the part of that person's soul flee Right? And then there could be something really fucking extreme and the soul stays intact. Like, it just depends. Everybody's different and everybody's living out different karma from the lives before. Right? So it's like, you never know. People think that some certain people are born without empathy and that's not true. Some people leaving the birth canal, something flees. Something flees. Okay. And then that's just how they have to live without that piece of their soul, right? Unless they are to become knowledgeable spiritually and able to like go collect that. Like there's a lot of things that are like they base on science when it's very spiritual. They're like, no, some people are just born. They don't feel empathy. Like, what? No. <laughs> no. No. I got told. <laughs> I got told. Okay. There's just a lot of confusion around this. Illusions around this. <clears throat> Like Jesus healed everybody. Murders, prostitutes, everybody. 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 He helped everybody. Okay, and that's a big reason of why people prosecuted him. Because he was helping people that other people cast a judgment on. That other people ridiculed. Like how dare you be healing these people that are such and such and such and such. Right? Those are the main people he helped. Were the people that were casted stones, you know? People who were like fucking taking stones, man. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. 
they just will leave the grit out of it, right? Because then how else would you have these commandments be like served? Okay? If you know that Jesus was helping murderers and prostitutes. Heal. Healing them. When So that they were no longer murderers and prostitutes. They weren't after that. They weren't. That would like change the masses, man. The power in that. Okay? It's like you don't see me... Teaching, like, preaching, like, shoving my stuff down people's throats, okay? They have the right to believe whatever they want. And I know that. So I make my own channel where you can either tune in or you can tune out. It's up to you. Okay? Something about, like, the way that, like, someone preaches something and, like, airs it, airs it on TV. Ew, I'm not going to say that. Okay, let's get off the church to topic. Let's get off the church topic. Okay, somebody's putting money into a church. This is exposed. That somebody's putting money into a church in order to not pay taxes. Something was like, there's a, some sort of charity that's not even a charity. It's not. It's a way to launder money. It's a way to launder money. Getting the government launders money through charities. Yikes. Yikes. Okay, just because they have a commercial doesn't mean it's any less of money laundering. <laughs> okay, it just means they have the money to back it. Okay. Through like sex trade, organ trafficking, right? You'd be surprised who like runs those tunnels, right? So crazy. Let's move on. Okay, that's why you don't attack. You don't attack an intuitive. I wasn't doing any harm to anybody. Okay, and now there's certain downloads in my mind that I can't just like. I don't even want to talk about it. I honestly don't want to talk about it. It just gets plopped into my mind, and then it's like, say something about this. Say something about this. Okay. That's why like when someone has like a huge ordeal, okay, when their rights as a human being are being tarnished, obliterated, okay, and they're a good person, you don't downplay what they're going through because God's going to put other evils in their path. For them to later rest. Okay. You don't attack a healer. You don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hasn't this happened in history before? Attacking healers. And now it's on like a global scale. Man. <laughs> This is, this is like your fate, man. This is your fate. Poverty. Poverty, institutionalized, or death. Poverty, institutionalized, or death. Okay? So if you are in poverty, understand that it could always be worse. Actually, you know what? That's probably the worst out of these outcomes. Dying is just too easy. Okay. Institutionalized, at least you're not fucking hungry or cold, right? You're not hungry or cold. You're just kind of trapped with, within everything that you've done, trapped in the mind. Never know what's happening next. Detainment. This is like... 
you're free for the streets to get at you. And that's where some of the worst shit happens is in the streets, man. It's like, best pray you go to jail. <laughs> Probably. Especially if you know how to handle yourself, you'll make good money in there. Thoth. Thoth. Okay. Thoth is a god of knowledge. I've spoken about Thoth before, but that's who has a hold of this situation, right? Like, great power. <laughs> great power somebody's trying to stop the ascension stop the ascension but but the planetary system is going to shift anyways okay it's going to be brought back into balance okay and that's why we're like ascending into some sort of stratosphere until that shift is complete and then we'll come back down and then there will be like way more or less dark empaths that roam the earth okay because they'll end up taking themselves out when all of the positivity is risen above them they'll take either take themselves out or another dark empath will take them out due to like the devilish um characters on earth it's like we we all carry the devil within us right we all carry god within us right that's why like but we carry like the devil card, let me read to you what, what it represents, okay? Because it's toxicity, okay? We've all been toxic before. It's obsession, okay? So, like, if you ever tuned into me on anything other than my YouTube, okay? You have that energy in you, okay? Because why do you keep watching me without my consent, okay? Overusing drugs or alcohol, that could be devilish energy. Um, trying to bond people, trying to... Create toxic bonds with people. Trauma bonding. Okay, that's a devilish trait. Doing this magic to bind yourself to me in my dream state. That's the devil. Okay. It's like a certain energy of toxicity. And um, I'm getting torment. Why can't I find the devil in here? Okay, it's sneaky. Even being sneaky is devilish. Okay. If you have ill intent or like you know that it's wrong and you're trying to be sneaky, ravage is devil. Violence is the devil. Okay. Force is the devil. Vengeance is the devil. Extraordinary efforts. Okay. Like it's not ease. It's not easy. Okay. But you're going to fucking do it anyways. That's the devil. Okay. Fatality. Okay. Which is predestined, but not for this reason, evil. Evil fatality. Pettiness. Keeping people blind. Okay, that's all devilish traits. And even if the devil card comes out, it isn't necessarily a bad thing. It could mean like that you're really obsessed with something. Like if there's other like positive cards following it, it could be like you're obsessed, you're obsessed with work. But it's really making a difference. Or you're obsessed with... Um, staying organized like a certain type of OCD right and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's it's just like you can't say somebody's evil okay and 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 paint it black like that or paint it white like that black and white like that right you can't do that okay I'm getting something about racism I don't even know why that fucking matters okay but speaking about this devilish energy, we all we all have it within us. We all attain that trait at least once in our life. Okay, nobody's a saint. Okay, but we also hold everything godlike within us too, right? So it's a choice of how to operate. It's a choice of how to operate. Okay, and yes, some sometimes people devilish character like like their traits the way that they operate outweighs the godliness in them and it makes them do certain things right so so if being sneaky is the devil and fatality is the devil and suicide is the devil 
and using is the devil and people can come back from those little things of like being sneaky and portraying something um to get on like at the upper hand to strong arm someone if that's the devil then why can't anything else that's that same energy field vibration be forgiven What if that's the only devilish thing they ever did in their life? And who's to say that you, like there just shouldn't be that label. There shouldn't be that label. We all have it within us. And it's a choice not to act out of that state. It's a choice not to act like that. It's a choice not to operate like that, right? These people are like passing judgment at like specifically like sex workers and like murderers. And like, you know that you've been a part of that somehow without knowing sex trade organ trafficking you know that you could have helped someone along the way so that they didn't like lose their life so that they didn't go missing and you didn't because you didn't know because you didn't know okay <laughs> stop judging people okay it's not up to you to persecute this person Plus, they'll get their karma anyways. Just let it go. Okay? You're just stacking up your karma for being judgmental. I don't know why judgmental keeps getting brought up. Because there's a certain judgment being passed. Okay? And it's going to be solidified. People fear this happening. A leap of faith. A leap of faith. Okay, I'm getting someone falling through the ice again. I'm getting someone falling through the ice or being put there. They're like pack light because they know that they're gonna like end this person. Oh shit. Yeah, like someone's gonna fall into the ice. I'm getting like ice back here. I'm getting ice back here. And they're like falling into the ice. Somebody's dog is going to miss them when they fall into the ice. Also, I'm getting like a, a window being smashed open to like um, a window being smashed open. I don't know why it's smashed open, but I don't know why they would some things like that. There's some sort of the last judgment, a change of position, a renewal, this outcome. Okay, so people are trying to get you to take a leap of faith. Okay, this, this goes back to um, this this dating competition preparation okay they want you to take a leap of faith so that they can have like a shoe in a foot in to your life so that when you get this new beginning this renewal that they get to be a part of it okay but you're no fool you're no fool you know you see it you feel them okay you feel their energy okay there's no getting back in so you could have people around you being like so what are we doing like as if they're a part of your plans, as if you've ever had any plans, as if they ever had any intention to ever create plans with you. And you're just like, nothing, <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> go make plans with your friends. Okay, go make plans with your friends. I'm getting Eve, I'm getting Yvonne. I'm getting Juanita. I'm getting Brenda. Elias. Elias. I'm getting Mastermind. I'm also getting Earl. And Richard. Okay. My hand is like almost healed, okay? It was really bad. It got really bad. It got really infected. This infection on my hand due to bacteria. Okay. And the things that I use on my body. Um, but then I got guided with certain herbs to like heal it, right? And like, it's almost healed. <laughs> it's almost healed, but it looks fucking terrible, man. Like, I, like I, 
I was supposed to like lose something from this, right? And that, but I also learned a lot. Like I learned a lot about ointments and then what salves to put over top and then, and then how to heal it, the points to heal it. Um, so yeah, that shit's almost gone and it was supposed to take my, like, it was supposed to take something off my body, like a limb, right? It was also supposed to infect my blood. Okay. But like healers, like they'll have certain guardian angels that really protect them. Like I'll know when my blood is like being like cleared, like cleared as if like my blood is just purified. The angels will purify my blood as if like I wish it was just brand new transfused blood. <laughs> okay. It's like so crazy. How, it's I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. Like we got like hardcore guardian angels because our job is is intense. Okay, <laughs> we do the shit that people don't have the balls to do. Okay, because we've already been through hell and back. We've already been through hell and back. And it's our job to speak to the masses what we've been through and how we got through it in order to teach people that they can do it too for themselves. Okay, so that we have people that are less codependent on systems that are corrupt and more independent, interdependent, and growing more healthy things for a more healthier world, okay? So it's like, we need that certain type of protection in order to be able to survive all the people that try to attack us in life, okay? So it's like, our protection is like insurmountable. It's like, it's so mystical, like all the things that I go through in order to survive, okay? Like I've literally had angels transfuse my blood for me, especially when they're, the hospital shot me up intravenous, right? I got put under a light. I got put under a light that was like fluorescent, okay? That's why, that's why I put diamond white light. That's why that's my... That's why that's my my name, my handle. Because that's what penetrated my entire being. Every cell of diamond white light to heal me when they killed me in the hospital. It was like, <laughs> okay. I can't explain the brightness. Okay, I, law, I, I didn't have vision. All I saw was white, bright white, bright white. And then I saw it within every single cell of my being. And I walked out of that hospital after I died. I walked out of that hospital. Okay, the herb of the day is red clover. Explain that to me. Explain it. It's hard to explain, okay? Other than the protection over my life. Okay? My purpose is great. My purpose is great. Okay, I'm going to be healing a lot of people. Okay, not only by speaking, because this isn't what I want to do forever, right? I want to go into my line of work and I want to be really, really, really good at what I do. And what I do is like, I heal people with the touch of my hands. That's what I do. Okay, and for every healing treatment that I do for people, even speaking to you, Right, and teaching teaching certain things is like healing, okay, with my voice. Okay, but but the power of the healing within my hands is like great. I just don't know how to operate it yet. Like I don't know, I don't know like the physics behind like the quantum side of it. I know I know that it works. I know that I've healed myself. Okay, in many aspects of my life. But if I were to learn like the science of it, the science part of it, just because I've never learned that yet, if I would have that knowledge, okay, um, 
it'd be way more powerful and I'd be able to heal a lot of people. So it's like that, that is my purpose. And my purpose is greater than these devils that want to attack me in my life. So that's why Thoth, okay, there's a God, the God, okay. I'm getting the ancient Egyptians. Okay, but like Thoth is like the God of knowledge. Okay, he's the God who ensures that light perseveres over dark. Okay, so he's going to have my back. So like certain people would try to tra attack me, try to set me up. You're not going to, you're not going to win. Okay, you can form that weapon all you want. You can construct those plans however you want. They'll be tarnished and destroyed. Because my purpose is greater than your evil. That's why I have no fear. Okay, that's why that fear left me. Because I got a better understanding of it. Just by looking into the guided things that I got in meditation. Like the guided subjects, topics. Okay, I look into those certain things. And then all of a sudden the fear just left me. I have nothing to fear. Okay? I've done nothing to fear anything like that to begin with. Okay? I've met certain devils in my life that were evil to me and portrayed me to be evil and portrayed me to be deceitful and portrayed me to be a liar. But it doesn't mean that's actually true. I didn't do any of those things. Okay? Those people are just evil. Okay? <laughs> and it's not even like it's the, it's not even like they necessarily like meant to it's like my light irritates people's demons okay and i'm very direct about it and outspoken so it like even makes it that much more fueled their hate right so it's like <laughs> they were an open vessel their belief system wasn't strong enough for things not to penetrate their aura or things not to use their body as a vessel to attack me okay so literally they were like they had demons like entities that were attacking me through that vessel okay when i went and saw the first healer that i saw and i told her about the attacks on me okay she's a psychic she's psychic so she's able to go back in my memory and see how brutally attacked i was by this man that i was with okay and she was like i don't think you understand the damage he did to you, your body. Like there's thousands upon thousands of fractures within your face. Okay, my face used to look different. Okay, before I started healing, like I didn't look the same as I did going into that relationship. And now it's like way different than what I looked before. It's so crazy because I've been slowly healing myself day in, day out, healing myself, okay, with the touch, it's called Jinsen Jitsu, okay, you could look that up, um, but like, she was like, I don't think you even know, and I didn't, until I did, until I did, okay, now that man will never be in my life again, he'll never be in my life again, so it's like, even though I need to stay away from that person, because like, he's still, he's still, he still has a shitty belief system. It's still penetrable. I don't even know if that's a word, but. Um, like people just don't even know. They don't even know the spiritual side of it. They don't even know why they're susceptible to it. Okay, so it's like. No hard feelings, but you'll never fucking be in my life again. Okay. It's like I already forgave these people who did really terrible things to me. Terrible things to me. Okay, I forgave them to God and I let it go because that was only keeping me binded to them, shackled to them. And I won't allow that to have power over me. I won't allow my abusers to have any sort of power over me. <laughs> Hell no. So God took that from me. Okay, so I don't even fear my abusers. I don't even fear the people that want to attack me. I don't even fear the people that want me dead. I don't even fear, fear the people that want to torture me. I don't. I don't. Because it won't fucking work. Okay? It won't work. My purpose is greater than yours. Red clover. The herb of the day, red clover, angel number 141. Traditionally, the blossoms of this plant were used as a tonic taking, taken in the spring to promote good health and peace of the mind. 
It contains small amounts of silica, choline or choline, calcium, and lysithin. Lys all essential for normal body function. It works as a muscle relaxer and also is a good expectorant. I don't know what an expectorant is still. It's an old time remedy for eczema. Okay, so if you need a muscle relaxer or a treatment for eczema. Combined with other herbs, red clover is used to prevent and treat cancer. Red clover is rich in phyt 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 phytestrogens, phytestrogens, I don't know. <laughs> Weak estrogen-like compounds, so it's going to explain what that is. Weak est estrogen-like compounds that block the effect of more potent estrogens in the body by competing with them for, for receptor sites on cells. Like all of our cells communicate with all the other cells which communicate with our brain, right? And then... And then cancer is like the same thing, but like it travels way faster for some reason. So if you were to like, if you were to like envision in your mind a separation from all these cancer cells, okay, like a separation so that network is divided and then attack all the cells individually within your mind, you'll cure your cancer. Okay, that's how powerful this shit is. That's how powerful this white light is, okay? This diamond white light, this pure white light, okay? That has worked, okay, on me and many others. Okay, there's this book, okay, written by Adam. He's he's like, he, he's so amazing. I, I get like real starstruck when I start talking about Adam and, and his books, but it's called The Dream Healer. Dream Healer, Dream Healer, and Dream Healer 2, okay? If you were to go read his books, okay, this is how he heals people from gangrene to cancer to everything. Everything can be healed. Everything can be healed. Okay. And he does this by like projecting like a holograph and understanding where that person has blockages in their body and healing them. He can heal people from like just looking at a picture miles and miles away. It's so amazing. Quantum healing is so amazing. So if he can do that, why can't I heal my own self, right, with quantum healing? That's for you skeptics. Go read his book. Go get educated on quantum healing, okay? <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> I like, he's so amazing. <laughs> um The neck is very, you need to be very like gentle with the neck. Okay. Like even if you want to like stretch the neck or crack the neck, don't just imagine that you are. Imagine that you're stretching it. Just keep your head straight and still and just imagine you're cracking your neck. Okay. Because something about like, it's really dangerous to be fucking with your neck. That's why you'll see certain people who just fall and die. Ooh, my God. I don't know why. I just got a huge chill. Combined with other herbs, red clover is used to prevent and treat cancer. Okay. Red clover is rich. Okay, I already read this part. Where am I at? 
Since real estrogen can stimulate the growth of existing cancers that are estrogen sensitive, for example, breast cells, weaker plant estrogens can help prevent the spread of existing cancers by keeping real estrogen away from these sensitive cells. In the 1940s, this herb received a good deal of notoriety because it was included in herb healer Harry Hoxie's anti-cancer formula, dubbed the red clover combination. Hoxie ran a chain of cancer clinics that were under frequent attack by the American Medical Association. At that time, the only legitimate treatments for cancer were surgery or radiation. I heard mutant, mutants. Although the medical establishment portrayed Hoxie's as quack, we now know that many of herbs included in this formula have anti-tumor properties. Modern research also validates the use of other herbs such as Madagascar, periwinkle for leukemia, and Pacific Hue for uterine and prostate cancer. Although Hoxie's formula, formula may not have been a cure-all for cancer, he was a pioneer in incorporating folklore treatments in modern day cancer therapy. And like that is so, I'm just not even going to, I'm not going to touch on that. I think you can like understand where my brain goes when, when this, when this man's getting attacked for like using herbs for healing, right? And like allowing people to treat themselves. You understand the money that our health system makes, right? And why they make it and then I'm getting brought in like some I'm hearing oxycotton and I'm also hearing fentanyl and I'm also hearing opiate opiate I'm hearing opiate massacre okay so it's something about the doctors pushing opiates upon people there's something like um if you're if you're if you're native Okay, Native Americans. Okay, Native Americans. Okay, they get certain free health care. Okay, we get certain free health care. Okay, and a lot of it is I'm hearing Valium. Um, we get opiates pushed on us like it's fucking candy. And then other treatments. Okay, other lighter treatments are not available to us. They don't pay for that. They will only pay for certain things so that they can push certain things. Okay, and other things won't be paid for so that you neglect those other more healthier routes. Okay, that's a tactic. Bet your ass it is. <laughs> okay. They don't want it to be empowered. Empowered, right? They just want you to blow that money into their fucking what? Go blow it. That's what they want. God forbid you get healthy and your kids get healthy and the generations get healed. Because then you'll have a better understanding of what has happened to the people. Okay, it doesn't even have anything to do with race, really. I'm hearing politics, but I don't want to get into politics. Oh, shit. <sighs> Clear that, please. Red clover is also being used as a treatment for side effects of menopause. As estrogen levels dip in the body, weaker plant estrogens can relieve many of the symptoms caused by estro estrogen deficiency, such as hot flashes. Isoflavins, a type of phytoestrogen, have also been shown to have bone sparring effect, a bone sparring effect, meaning they can help prevent osteoporosis by preventing the loss of calcium. So osteoporosis and hot flashes, okay? And osteoporosis, like, sometimes... I'm getting all the time, okay? That is like a side effect of menopause. So as you get older, like as a woman, 
your bones start to lose their density. Okay, so this would be good for that. Possible benefits. Helps prevent cancer. Used to treat menopause symptoms. Good for skin inflammations and relaxes the body. Okay, red clover. And then you could you could always like go back and look at this man's story and know the combination, right? Let's read this. Harry Hoxie, it's an anti anti cancer formula. The red clover combination. That's what it's called. The red clover combination. Okay, and then we're also gonna read. Don't sweat the small stuff. Wow. I was like transmuting things in my dream, right? It's so funny. Like this, this childhood friend of mine, okay? I caught her in my dream state and she was like trying to show me something, but then she like showed her cards. She like showed me her cards and her cards was like um, portraying me to be a certain way. And then I was getting like her cards had like a picture of like a witch on it. But then it was like actually like her looking in the mirror. It was so weird. It was so weird. But then like projecting that onto me in my dream state and like trying to do evil stuff in my dream state. So I like took those cards and I fucking lit them on fire in my dream. So like even in my dream state, I'm fighting off these attacks and they're not going to work. Okay. And you'll get really terrible karma for that. So it's like they, you can't even manipulate my dreams at this point. Right. When I was younger, I used to have these dreams that there was these evil people doing evil things. And I was like a bystander. And this is how I know that there's no such thing as like, um, as an innocent bystander, okay? They were doing these evil things. And the intent was, you're gonna do these evil things or we're gonna be evil to you too. And like, I remember in my dreams, I'd like get down with the evil people just so that I wouldn't be attacked. Okay, but I've grown since then. I've grown since then. So now in my dream state, when these evil people approach me, I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> right? And I'm standing on my own two feet and nothing can convince me to do anything like they do, <laughs> right? So it just shows me even in the progression of my dream state. Okay. Angel number 37, angel number 95, choose being kind over being right. As I first introduced my strategy in number 12, let's look at number 12. Let others be right most of the time. Let others be right most of the time. Because it doesn't really matter, honestly. But we could go back and read that one. Or should we go? I, I'll go back and read that one first, okay? Go back and read that one first, and then we'll be done after these two. Someone's telling God that. They're like, I'll be done after these two. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. But I'm serious about that pen pal thing, though. <laughs> Not all y'all fuck off but like this certain person <sighs> okay let others be right most of the time <sighs> don't do it most of the time important questions you can you can ever ask yourself is do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Sometimes the two are mutually exclusive. Being right, defending our positions, takes an enormous amount of mental energy and often alienates us from the people in our lives. Needing to be right or needing someone else to be wrong encourages others to become defensive and puts pressure on us to keep defending. Yet, many of us, me too at times, spend a great deal of time and energy attempting to prove our point that we're right and or others are wrong. 
Many people consciously or unconsciously believe that it's somehow their job to show others how their positions, statements, and points of view are incorrect. And in doing so, the person they're correcting is going to somehow appreciate it or at least learn something. Wrong. They're not receptive to it. Okay, they'll only be put in anger <laughs> unless there's someone who is aware. Okay, and then they are receptive to it, but you probably wouldn't be having this conversation to them, with them to begin with if they were receptive to it. Okay, you'd just be able to have a, uh, like a concrete, um, constructive discussion. Okay, think about it. If you've ever been corrected by someone and said to the person who is trying to be right, thank you. So much for showing me that I'm wrong and that you're right. Now I see it. Boy, you're great. <laughs> or <clears throat> has anyone you know ever thanked you or even agreed with you when you corrected them or made yourself right at their expense? Of course not. The truth is all of us hate being corrected. It's like you missed the point. Or, or like... If you are corrected and it's accurate, then it's like, oh, okay, okay, I see, I see, like, okay. But if, if you're corrected and they're stuck on something little you said that was incorrect, it's like you missed the fucking point. <laughs> you missed the fucking point, okay? And then that's like, you just, uh, the annoyance in that is just ridiculous for me. <laughs> but that's something that I need to work on, right? It's not my fault. They just need to be left where they're at. They need to be left where their head's at. Oh, damn. Why do these fucking heads keep brought, getting brought up, man? I'm getting, I was getting decapitation this morning. And I was getting like someone thinking about decapitating a couple people. And, and then literally I looked down and there's two little Lego heads on the counter. Okay? No bodies. Just heads. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Okay, where was I at with this? We all want our positions to be respected and understood by others. Being listened to and heard is one of the greatest desires of a human heart. And those who learn to listen are most loved and respected. Those who are in the habit of correcting others are most often resented and avoided. I'm getting like a woman is like always has something to say. <laughs> There's a woman who has always has something to say. And this is exactly why people, men keep leaving you. That's why they like resent you afterwards. That's why they avoid you afterwards. Okay. It's because you have a bad habit of having to correct others or add or whatever. Righteousness. Righteousness. Like even if that person's correct, you add something to it. It's like. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Um, it's like you steal their, you steal their like manlyhood, right? <laughs> Don't do that. It's exactly why these men leave you. It's not that it's never appropriate to be right. Sometimes you genuinely, genuinely need need to be or want to be. Okay, perhaps there are certain psychological and like how I was saying like yesterday was fun to me to be able to like tell these people where I was at with this situation with my kid's birth certificate being stolen. It's not that I like go out seeking that, but when the opportunity arises where I need to be genuinely like I need to be right, I need to be factual, I need I need to this this to be portrayed simply and directly and I know what I'm talking about. Okay, when those situations arise, I do get excited. Okay, but I'm not out searching for them and it's a need to be right and any sort of thing like that. Okay, it's like these things will naturally come up in life that you don't need to seek them. Okay, you don't need to go out searching for them. But when the time comes, like be up for the challenge to be able to know that you're right. And, and, and present it in a very simple, direct manner. Okay. And then you'll start enjoying these little things in life when they present themselves, 
when need be. Okay. Perhaps there are certain psychological positions that you don't want to budge on, such as when you hear a racist comment. Okay, and I was getting racist racism, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it, racistism. Here, it's, here it is important to speak your mind. Not really. Okay, that's like one thing that I disagree on. Like, if you hear that shit, rise above and walk away. Okay? You don't need to stand your ground on that shit because it doesn't fucking matter what color we are. It doesn't matter where we come from. We're all human beings. Okay? Turn the other cheek. Turn. <laughs> I laugh when I say turn the other cheek because, like, people are like, turn the other cheek, right? But I always think butt cheek. <laughs> so that's why I think it, turn the other cheek is funny. But it doesn't matter. And that's why we don't entertain it. Okay? And, okay, so it goes in deeper here. Usually, however, this is your ego creeping in when you're being racist, okay? And it's ruining other peaceful encounters. You get your root, your peace ruiner. <laughs> it's a habit of wanting or needing to be right. Uh, yeah, and like over something that nobody has control over. Nobody was like, okay, God, born me black, born me Indian, born me Asian, born me that way. It's like, what the fuck? How the fuck are you going to ever ridicule someone for their color? <laughs> it just there's no logic to it there just isn't okay and that's like separation right we need to be integrated we need to be more tolerant and respectful okay so when you hear someone being racist fucking turn the other cheek and know that that's no person to be interacting with <laughs> okay okay a wonderful, heartfelt strategy for becoming more peaceful and loving is to practice allowing others the joy of being right. Give them that glory. Stop correcting. Because eventually they'll have to learn their lesson, right? In that, they'll do that to the wrong person or get humbled somehow, okay? And it's not your job to humble them. It's like, ooh, I know the lesson you're going to be learning next, right? And move on. And you don't even have to say that. Just recognize it. Don't correct it. Let them go down that path and humble themselves. Okay? As hard as it may be to change this habit, it's worth any effort and practice that it takes. When someone, sa when someone says, I really feel it's important to dot, 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 rather than jumping in and saying, no, it's more, more important to dot, 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 or any of the hundreds of forms of conversational editing, simply let it go and allow their statement to stand. The people in your life will become more loving and less defensive. They'll feel appreciated, okay? They will appreciate you more than you could ever dreamed possible, even if they don't know exactly why. <laughs> You'll discover the joy of participating and in witnessing other people's happiness, which is far more rewarding than the battle of the egos. You don't have to sacrifice your deepest you don't have to sacrifice your deepest philosophical truths or more most heartfelt opinions, but starting today, let others be right most of the time. Okay, so that when there's things like your son's birth certificate birth certificate being stolen, that's when you don't allow other people to re be right over you. Somebody's really worked up about that situation still, okay? Because I just felt like really worked up and like stuttering over my words just then and that's not my energy. That's not my energy. Okay, so we are going to... Oh shit, now I don't know what page I was on before. <laughs>
I don't know, but we're going to read this one instead. Angel number 121. Remember that everything has God's fingerprints on it. Rabbi Harold Kushner reminds us that everything that God has created is, created is potentially holy. Our task as humans is to find the holiness in what we appear to be unholy situations. He suggests that when we learn to do this, we will have learned to nurture our souls. It is easy to see God's beauty in a beautiful sunrise, a snow-caped mountain, the smile of a healthy child, or in ocean waves crashing on a sandy beach. But we can learn to find the holiness in seemingly ugly circumstances, difficult life lessons, a family tragedy, or a struggle for life. When our life is filled with the desire to see the holiness in everyday things, something magical begins to happen. A feeling of peace emerges. We begin to see nurturing aspects of daily living that, we were, pre that were previously hidden to our eyes. When we remember that everything has God's fingerprints on it, that alone makes it special. If we remember this spiritual fact when we are dealing with a difficult person or struggling to pay our bills, it broadens our perspective. I'm getting a bird's eye view. A bird's eye view. It helps us to remember that God also created the person you're dealing with. <clears throat> or that despite your struggle to pay your bills, you are truly blessed to have all that you do. Somewhere in the back of your mind, try to remember that God has his fingerprints on it. The fact that we can't see beauty in something doesn't suggest that it's not there. Rather, it suggests that we're not looking carefully enough or with enough broad enough perspective to see it. I love how it says God has created everything that God has created is potentially holy. Okay, everybody has that potential. Okay, you understand that? People understand that. People, smart people know this. Okay, and like not, it's, it has nothing to do with intellect, okay? It has everything to do with the spiritual understanding of things. Quieting the mind. Allowing yourself to be bored. Allowing these things to just come to you. Okay, and you just know it in your being. And, and maybe you can't put a finger on it. You can't pinpoint how you know it, but you just do. Because you've allowed yourself to be aligned within. Okay, have a good day, people. I'm going to get my day started. I have a lot of things to do today. Um, yeah. I hope that you guys find your way to healing and I hope that somebody doesn't lose their head. Okay. I hope that you find guidance in the words that I speak because I know that I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm speaking to you. I just know that it's not worth it and that you get a new beginning once you cut these people out, but you got to do it. You got to do it. It's, it's really the easier route. Okay. Don't let your emotions control your actions. Okay, that's exactly what they wanted for you, was for you to be incarcerated or dead. Okay, so you're going to give them that? You're going to give your enemies that power over you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would have satisfaction over cutting them off and never that allowing them in my life and the people around me knowing that as well cut them off and not allow them in their life either. Okay, if you choose to not cut other people, like these people off that are connected to them, right? I would just cut them all off, but I understand that, that that's hard to do. Don't allow that situation to have power over you. That's exactly what they wanted for you. And you're just allowing it to happen because you're in an emotional state, because you feel like a fool, because you feel neglected, rejected, betrayed. 
transmute that energy and cut these people off because something's good coming for you. Like, I don't care. You got good karma. All the things that you did for these people while they were betraying you allowed your karma to like go up hugely. You just got to cut them off now. Cut the cord. I'm hearing free falling. <laughs> Someone's having to fall from grace. They feel like a fool. As they should. Let them on their own. Okay, have a good day, people.